G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for my mid-season All-Australian, uh, not predictions, but my, my team based on performances so far in season 2023. There's been some fantastic standout performances, a few surprises, uh, well not, not genuine shocks, but uh, certainly in my team I've got a couple of uh, would-be first-time All-Australians as well. So it's nice to see it mixed up a little bit. By the time you're watching this, I'm probably on my three-week trip um, through Europe as well. So I'm recording this at the conclusion of round 10. Hawthorne has just annihilated the Eagles by 116 points, but that's why I'm wearing a Melbourne shirt. I obviously go for Melbourne now. Only joking, of course, this shirt was a very kind gift. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, the, the 22 that I've picked. I'm going to go through line by line, and I'm going to give you a bit of a justification as to why I've picked them where they are. Before we crack into it, uh, we will shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com. For all your manscraping needs, manscraping... <laughs> For all your male grooming needs, Manscaped has everything you could possibly need. The Lawnmower 4.0 helps you shave the body uh, quickly and easily, and there'll be no man scraping as such because there is a ceramic blade to help reduce grooming accidents. It comes with a little LED light, and the best thing about it is that it is waterproof, so you can take it into the shower, um, which is the most convenient way to shave your chest or other things. But of course, they've got all these liquid formulations as well, like ball moisturizers, deodorants, the crop reviver. They've got a, a cologne, a general body cologne as well. They've got little things like boxes as well. So have a browse on the website, guys, and through TrueFooty, you get 20% off by using the code TrueFooty20 at checkout. Like I said, you get 20% off and free shipping. It's a great deal. It's a great product that I genuinely use all of this stuff. Like I said, by the time you're watching this, I'm probably gallivanting through Europe at the moment and you can bet that I've got my lawnmower 4.0 in the travel bag uh, to make sure that I'm looking fine and dandy throughout this holiday. Do yourselves a favor, do your balls a favor and check out the website for 20% off. Cool, so it is time to crack into my best 22, team of the year, mid-year All-Australian, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're gonna start with the back line. And I've naturally gone for six defenders, uh, three talls, but I've kind of gone for a shorter back line in today's video, um, just because I think some of the best performed players are genuinely, you know, a little bit undersized for key position. So I'm gonna give you my six and I'm gonna name you the bench option because I've got one for each position. So I'm gonna start off, like I said, with a short back line and my three talls are Darcy, more as the main uh, lockdown defender, even though he's an intercept rebounder as well. But Wilkie and James Sicily also round out my back three talls as well. Even though Sicily and Wilkie, I think, are a little bit undersized for the positions they play, it doesn't matter because they have shown an ability to play taller than they actually are. Wilkie has been elite this year. He's equal eight in the coaches' votes, and uh, Darcy Moore is actually equal eight as well. And he's just come off that amazing performance against Carlton, where he actually broke the record for intercept marks. James Sicily has been a wonderfully consistent defender over the stretch as well. Not only is he leading the league in marks as well, but he offers good rebound uh, with his good skills as well. And he's tremendously consistent, winning the ball like 30 times a game. Then in terms of my small to medium players in the back line, uh, Nick Dacos is probably the easiest one to make. Uh, you're probably surprised I didn't start there, but I decided to start with the Tolls. Um, he's obviously the leading possession winner in the actual competition right now for a second year player. He gets talked about a lot, so making a case for him to be in my old Australian team is very very easy but obviously adds a whole heap of rebound can mix it through the middle I think he's kicked six goals from 10 games this year as well so he hits the scoreboard terrific player absolute lock for this team then my other sort of rebounding types, uh, I've actually gone Ed Richards, which would be a first-time All-Australian, much like Dacos, actually, um, who's having a terrific season as a rebounding defender in particular uh, against Adelaide. I thought he played really well, and he's ranked fifth for rebound 50s. And the other guy I'll nominate is Dan Houston for Port Adelaide, who I don't think has made All-Australian before, but he might have. But he's ranked uh, something like 11th in the league for meters game this year, and uh, particularly against Melbourne, we saw a top-tier performance where he had 33 touches and a clutch goal as well. So he makes my side. Uh, through my bench option for my defense. Then we're going to get into uh, the cold face, where the magic happens, and that is the midfield. And I've uh, ranked five on the field and one option, as you can imagine. And I'll start off with Marcus Bonds and Pelly, who was a serious chance for his first Brownlow medal this year. He's got 26 disposals a game. He's ranked second in tackles and second in clearances. So the beautiful thing about Marcus Bonds and Pelly is that he's damaging on the outside. He can go forward and kick a goal. Um, but the fact that he's getting in, stuck into the clinches, um, 
um, in some tough, you know, particularly some wet games as well. He's been an absolute warrior for them, and he's actually ranked first in Super Coach uh, scores this year as well. But he's generally been heroic and a good chance for the Brownlow at the end of the year. Clayton Oliver is also in my on ball division, uh, who's had a terrific year. Uh, I think he's just done a hammy, so I'm not sure how long he's out for. So if he misses a lot of footy, he may not actually make the side at the end of the year. But this video is based on performances to date this year. He's top five in the coaches' votes. He's winning 33 possessions a game, second in contested possessions as well, um, which is not surprising because he's such a crash and bash kind of player. Generally wins Melbourne so much territory um, as well in the way he plays. And the other thing about him is just so consistent. Whether Melbourne's playing poorly or they're playing well, you can bet that Clayton Oliver is one of the best performed players in that team. Lockie Neal takes my other on-ball spot as well, um, particularly coming off a great couple of games where he had 35 and 34. The last two games he's played, as I record this anyway, um, he's sixth in coaches' votes, he's second in overall clearances, and he's the number one centre clearance player as well. So we know as a former Brownlow medalist how good he is, and I think he's putting together another All-Australian year this year. Then we've got my wings, and they're two South Australian-based players, um, and I'm sure that Zach Butters on a wing probably looks a bit odd, but he's the most uh, outside-leaning sort of player that I've selected here. But we'll start with Butters, who's put together an amazing seven weeks. He's averaging 27 disposals across the year. And as I record, this has just come off a 41 possession and two goal game against Melbourne. And he's been absolutely unreal. It's been a pleasure to see the evolution of him as a play with promise that has had injury battles over the year to now potentially fulfilling his potential. And again, a, a sneaky chance for the Brownlow as I record this right now. Again, there's a lot of the season to play out. Can he be consistent enough? Maybe, but for now, he's certainly put together enough to be in my team. Then there's Jordan Dawson, who, as I record this, um, has had a quite a few weeks and, and been a little bit nullified, particularly against the Western Bulldogs in their most recent game. But nonetheless, we're looking at the whole season as a body of work, and Jordan Dawson has put together enough form there to make my team. And I think there was a patch there in the first five weeks of the year where he probably had nine round low votes in three consecutive games. He's top five in super coach scores. He's uh, winning the ball 27 times a game, seventh in meters gained, and uh, as I said, several best on ground performances. Then this was a tough one to separate. There's some like several unlucky players to miss out on my midfield spot. To name some of the unlucky players that didn't make it, you've got Brayshaw, Green, uh, Dunkley, Laird, Liberatore, Rosie, Merritt, Cornelio, and Golden. So I had so many players that I tried to narrow down for this one spot. But the player that does make it is Fremantle's Caleb Sarong, um, who's had a terrific year this year. If, if anything, a little bit underrated, averaging 31 touches a game. He's a top three clearance player in the comp as well, and fourth inside 50. So not only is he winning it at the cold face, but he's getting the ball inside 50 as well, showing great balance to his game. Again, sneaky chance for the Brownlow, probably an outside chance at this point, but there's plenty of the season left to play out. We'll talk briefly about my rucks as well. I've gone with two, one on the field, obviously, and one on the bench. And the player that makes my field spot is Tim English, who has put together a fantastic season. Um, he's been pretty consistent. He's averaging nearly 20 touches a game and 29 hitouts, and he's actually the highest generating fantasy player in the comp, which again is not a, a huge indicator of, of quality, but it does suggest how consistent and how prolific he has been over the course of the year. Obviously, he's a little bit different to Sean Darcy, who I have on my bench, but I think they offset each other well and could play really well together in the same team. Don't get any ideas, Fremantle. A little bit different. Darcy's a bit more of a, uh, a brick kind of player who will win a lot of hitouts and clunk a few marks forward, and English is obviously a bit more of a roam around accumulating Ruckman, which is why I think they play well together. But Darcy averages 15 touches, 42 hitouts and five clearances a game. Uh, the unlucky player not to make this side is Rowan Marshall. And I do think if we continue on our current trajectory, Rowan Marshall is more likely to not than not to be in the All-Australian team at the end of the year. He's quietly had a really good couple of months and he's averaging 20 disposals and 27 hitouts. So he's a sneaky chance and it's pretty line ball between all three of those players, to be honest. Then we'll talk about my forward line and I'll start with the keys like I did um, for my defense. And I've gone with a pretty basic option of the three most prolific goal scorers so far this year. So we've got Jeremy Cameron, who was arguably the best player in the comp for the first you know, six to eight weeks of the season. Uh, he definitely takes one of the spots. He's kicked 34 goals, second in the common. And you've got to include the uh, highest goal scorer this year in Charlie Kerno, who's been fantastic several big bags. Uh, I think he kicked six against North, he kicked nine against West Coast and uh, super damaging player. And then Tom Hawkins takes the third spot because uh, I think he had a bit of a quieter start to the year, but in recent weeks is genuinely making an impact. Sort of as Cameron is starting
starting to slow down a little bit from his early season form. So those are my three talls. Now this is a bit naughty, but I've shoehorned Petrarca into my forward line. He's an absolute lock for the All Australian team, but for my team balance, I needed someone, a genuine midfielder to play forward. And to be honest, he's not the only one I've done this with. He's equal third in the coaches votes. He's had 28 disposals, six clearances a game. Um, and he's also hitting the scoreboard with uh, 10 goals from 10 games as well. So you could easily chuck Petrarca on a forward line for the whole game and he would still have an impact. I've also done this with Jordan Dugowie, who I know is playing a fair bit of midfield this year. He's averaging 25 disposals uh, and he's actually ranked fourth in center clearances uh, per game, I think, this year, which uh, indicates, you know, he's winning the ball in the center of the ground as well and certainly playing less forward. But I've done a bit of a dirty here and I've shoehorned two players that absolutely deserve to be in the All-Australian team, in my opinion, but for team balance and a lack of other clear options as forwards, both of them make my forward line. And the one pure forward that's not a midfielder or a key position player, Charlie Cameron, absolute lock for this team right now. He's fifth in the common, which is a great effort for a small forward. It's uh, pretty uncommon for them to get really hard to win in the common. He's kicked 28 goals, and that's included two bags of six goals and seven goals. And he's actually second in the league for tackles inside 50. So he's showing a great balance between attack and defense as well. So Charlie Cameron's an absolute lock for this team. And Toby Green also makes this team. He's played eight games, but he's averaging nearly three goals a game. Um, the good thing about Toby Green is despite being a forward half player, he is good whether the GWS is winning or losing. And uh, he's the captain now and a tr fantastic barometer for them. So he's played uh, only eight games out of 10, but still um, makes my all Australian bench and could potentially make it on the field, to be honest. My one unlucky player here was probably Oscar Allen. Um, he's faded a little bit in recent weeks because uh, I think he's playing injured and there's also the factor that the Eagles really suck, but I think he's sixth in the Coleman. And if we're being fair, to achieve that in a team that is dreadfully hopeless is a fantastic achievement. And you have to watch Eagles games to see how much better Allen is than the next best player there. So he's my unlucky forward with Tom Hawkins' recent form just sort of nudging him out of the way. But anyway, guys, that is my mid-season All-Australian team. By all means, let me know in the comments which team you think I hate this week. Um, I'm sure that I've missed out some uh, from some unlucky players. It's hard to be all across the entire league evenly. And, um, you know, you just have to see all the different other mid-season All-Australian teams that are going to come out. Um, and you're going to see there's some genuine variances between the two. So that being said, I like the feedback. It helps me grow, helps me learn. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with. As always, guys, hope you're enjoying the content. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, and if you also liked the video, if you enjoyed it, that would help me from an algorithm point of view as well. But thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.